everyone. So today we're going to talk about how to draw Lewis dot diagrams. Um, now the steps here, you saw these in your hyperdoc or a version of them. Um, now the first step, we want to find the total number of valence electrons, which we can see from the periodic table. Then we want to draw the skeletal structure. And when we do this, we want to put the atom that can make the most bonds in the middle. I'll explain in a second what I mean by that. Um, and then if we can, we want to make the structure as symmetrical as possible. And then number three, we want to place le leftover electrons so that the octet rule is followed um, so that every element that wants it can have a complete octet. Or if we have something like hydrogen, of course, hydrogen only wants two electrons. Um, and then step number four is we want to count up the total number of electrons and make sure it matches the total number of valence electrons you counted in step one. And if it doesn't, we're going to make double or triple bonds until the numbers match and the octet rule is followed. Um, this is how I usually do this. There is another way that I will show you in a second. All right, so I'm going to show you two ways when we get to, I think, carbon uh, monoxide. I'll show you how to do two different ways for that. <clears throat> so let's do uh, some examples. Oh, wait, before we do examples, I'm going to talk about this um, most bonds thing. So these are the uh, valence electrons on the periodic table. So we can see we have one valence electron, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Of course, right here between group 2A and 3A, this is where the transition metals are. Um, but here we can see that when we look at the valence electrons, this is going to tell us how many bonds these things make. So hydrogen only has one valence electron. It only wants two. So it just has space to take in one more electron and make that one bond. Something like oxygen has six valence electrons. And so these two are happy. Um, these places right here are places that we can take in one more electron to make two bonds. So hydrogen makes one bond, oxygen makes two bonds. And then we can see here that if we look at carbon and nitrogen, nitrogen has five valence electrons. So we have this one lone pair at the top, and then these three are available to make three bonds like this. And then carbon with four valence electrons actually makes the most bonds. So if you ever see carbon, in your uh, covalent formula, you want to make sure that carbon is in the middle of your molecule when you're drawing that Lewis structure because carbon is the thing that's going to make the most bonds. So let's do some examples. Now, um, Cl2O, that's dichlorine monoxide. Um, so I like to draw the skeletal structure first. I'm a little bit of a rebel. I go to step number two before step number one. Um, but we need to also count up these valence electrons. So if I'm drawing the skeletal structure and I want to make it as symmetrical as possible, I'm going to put oxygen in the center here. And then I'm going to put my chlorines on either side of the oxygen, OK, because that makes it symmetrical. Now, um, let's count up these valence electrons. I know chlorine is a halogen, so that has seven valence electrons, and then oxygen has six valence electrons. So seven valence electrons plus seven valence electrons plus six valence electrons. Uh, seven plus seven is 14 plus six. That is 20 valence electrons. So I have 20 valence electrons that are going to be participating in these bonds. So remember, valence electrons, those are the only ones that participate in the bonds. Um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to fill up everyone's uh, valence electrons so that we have a complete octet for everyone and everyone's happy. So here's my chlorine. I'm going to put six more on chlorine. I'm going to put four more on oxygen, and then I'm going to put six more on this chlorine as well. Remember, those bonds that I drew, this line and this line, they represent two electrons. And those two electrons are shared by both chlorine and oxygen. So here, this chlorine has two, four, six, eight. It's happy. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight. It's also happy. And this chlorine has two, four, six, eight. It is happy as well. So everyone's happy. And now what we want to do is we want to count up our electrons here to make sure that they match this 20 valence electrons that we uh, counted before. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. We are happy. We are balanced, basically, because they both equal 20 valence electrons. And so this is going to be our Lewis structure for my dichlorine monoxide. All right, let's do another one. 
Um, so I have nitrogen trihydride. So again, nitrogen, remember, makes three bonds. So um, that one is going to be the one that makes the most bonds. And if I want to make it symmetrical, as symmetrical as possible, I'm going to have to put nitrogen in the middle. So nitrogen goes in the middle here. And then I'm going to put my hydrogens around nitrogen so that it is as symmetrical as possible. Now, I know that hydrogen has one valence electron and nitrogen has five. So nitrogen's right here. It has five valence electrons. Hydrogen is right here. It has one valence electron. So I have one, two, three plus five is eight valence electrons to play with. All right. So I have eight valence electrons. Now, all of these hydrogens are already happy because they all have a bond, right? So they all have two valence electrons and they are totally stable and happy. This nitrogen, however, only has six, two, four, six. So it needs two more valence electrons. So I'm just going to add those two to the top. This is called a lone pair. Um, and now nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. And look, our um, so that one's happy. And look, it matches our eight valence electrons, two, four, six, eight. So this is going to be our Lewis structure for this nitrogen trihydride. All right, next we have carbon monoxide. Now carbon monoxide is a little bit trickier. So um, because it's just two elements, we just put them side by side, okay? So um, I like to put carbon first because it is listed first. So carbon and then oxygen. Um, now we all also <laughs> wanna look at the periodic table and see how many valence electrons we have. So carbon has four valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons. So together, four plus six equals 10. So I have 10 valence electrons to play with here, okay? Now, if I just fill up everyone's valence electrons um, without kind of keeping in mind this 10 first, it's gonna look like this, right? Carbon already has two from this bond, so I need to add uh, six more. And then this oxygen, same, it already has two, so I need to add six more. Right, so they're both happy. Both carbon has eight and oxygen has eight. However, if I count these up, I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, which doesn't match this 10, okay? So uh, this is too many. I don't have 14 valence electrons in this structure. So this just is not possible. So what I need to do now is I need to actually erase some of these electrons. And I need to, what I do is I erase two on each of them. And then I'm going to draw another line in between carbon and oxygen. Because instead of having um, our two lone pairs each, um, I'm going to have carbon and oxygen both give an electron, basically. They're sharing two electrons in between them. All right. So now I'm going to count again, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Again, it still doesn't match this 10 valence electrons. So I actually have to erase two more and then I have to um, have them share two more valence electrons. So I erase two and then I'm going to draw one more bond in between these. And then look, now we are good because we have two, four, six, eight, ten. So that matches my ten valence electrons. And both carbon and oxygen are happy because carbon has two, four, six, eight, and oxygen has two, four, six, eight. So this is following those steps that I showed you on the first slide. Now, instead, if you wanted to um, do it a little bit of a different way, what we can do is we can draw carbon, so carbon and oxygen, and what we can do is we can just draw the valence electrons on each of these. So carbon has four, right? So one valence electron. I'm going to actually draw them like this, two, three, and four, like that. All right. And then oxygen has six. So we have one, two, three, four, and then five, six. All right. And then the next step here is that I can connect um, our electrons because these are the ones that are going to bond. So this carbon could say, okay, I'm going to share this electron with you, oxygen, all right? And then I'm also gonna share this electron with you so that I get your electron also from here and from here. And oxygen's like, okay, that works because I get your electron from here and from here. So if we, we've shared two electrons each, and so now if I count again, carbon has two, four, and then five, six, and this oxygen has two, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. So oxygen's happy here, but carbon is still not very happy. So what's going to happen here is that basically this oxygen says, well, I can see that you are not totally happy. So I'm actually going to take my two electrons here and I'm going to donate them into a bond so that we can both share and we can both be happy. So those two electrons are donated into a triple bond. And so what we get now is we get carbon triple bonded with oxygen. And then carbon still has those one, two lone, that lone pair of electrons. And oxygen also has one, two electrons that are not bonded together like that. So you get the same structure as you got up here. It's just a little bit of a different way to look at it. Um, so two ways to do the same thing. Um, some people like this way better and some people like this way better. All right, I have, I think, two more examples. So here we have dicarbon dinitride. Um, carbon makes more bonds than nitrogen, so we wanna put carbon in the center here. So I have two carbons, so I'm gonna put them both in the center. Remember, we wanna make this as symmetrical as possible. And then I'm gonna put two nitrogens on the outside like this. And then my next step here is I wanna count up my um, valence electrons. So remember, nitrogen, E they each have five valence electrons, and I can see that from the periodic table right here. Carbon each has four valence electrons. So I get five plus four is nine, plus uh, four is 13, plus five is 18. So I have 18 valence electrons total here. And then I am going to, just like before, I'm just going to add electrons to everyone, and then we will see where we're going from there, okay? Um, so I can see that this nitrogen has two already, so it wants six more in order to have that complete octet. This carbon has two, four, so it wants four more. This carbon has also two, four, so it wants four more to have eight. And then this nitrogen has two, so it wants six more. Now remember, this has to add up to 18. So now if we count these, we get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. That's way too many. So the next thing we need to do is we need to make some double and triple bonds. <clears throat> Now, I'm going to make a double bond in between this carbon and nitrogen, and I'm actually going to do it on this side too, just because, again, I want it to be as symmetrical as possible. Um, now, this doesn't always happen. Sometimes we get some things called resonance structures, which we'll talk about later when we're doing these uh, Lewis dot diagrams. Um, but as of right now, I have 26 electrons, and I need to get it down to 18. So 26 is just way too many. Um, so I am going to erase some of these. So I'm going to erase these ones and erase these ones, and they're going to share instead of having their own lone pair. Same with these right here. I'm going to erase these ones and erase these ones, and they're going to share as well. So we get, oops, that was a mistake. Um, we have shared there and shared there. So now this nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. This carbon has two, four, six, eight. This one has two, four, six, eight. And this nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. So everyone's happy, but let's count again. We have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. So again, that's too many. <clears throat> Now, something we could do is we could erase these and make a double bond in the center here as well. And so each carbon would be happy, but we would still have too many. So I, what I need to do is I need to make triple bonds here and here. So again, <clears throat> I'm going to erase this one too. Um, I'm going to erase these, that lone pair and this lone pair and this lone pair and this lone pair, <clears throat> and they're going to share instead. All right. So, um, we share for a triple bond, and triple bond. And so now this nitrogen and this nitrogen are both happy. We have two, four, six, eight. This carbon is happy because it has two, four, six, eight. This carbon is happy because it has two, four, six, eight. And this nitrogen is happy because it has two, four, six, eight. So that works. Everyone's happy. Now we have to make sure it li lines up with this 18 valence electrons that we had that are participating in this bonding. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and we are good. <clears throat>
Now, that other way I was talking about, um, so here's my nitrogen, carbon, oh wait, I need to erase that. Let's go back. Nitrogen, carbon, carbon, and nitrogen. So remember, nitrogen has five valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five. Carbon has four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then nitrogen has five. One, two, three, four, five. So another way to do this is just to connect these dots, right? So nitrogen and carbon are bonded together. These two carbons are bonded together. These two are bonded together. Um, but now, look, they're not happy yet because this carbon only has two, four, five, six. Same with this one. This nitrogen has two, four, five, six as well. So we need to also share these ones and these ones <clears throat> and these ones and these ones. So now everyone's happy. Nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. Carbon has two, four, six, eight. And then same thing on this side because it's a mirror image. So again, those are two ways to do the same uh, Lewis dot diagram. All right. Last but not least, we have this one right here. We do not have to know how to name this one. It is um, more than two elements. But I do want you to um, figure, try to figure out how to draw a Lewis dot diagram with something like this. All right. So again, carbon makes the most bonds. So carbon is going to go in the middle here. So I have two carbons. <clears throat> Make that a little bit smaller. And then two chlorines. So I'm going to put those on either side of carbon in order to, again, make it more symmetrical. And then I have four hydrogens. So I don't really, I mean, there's probably a couple ways we can do this. In order to make it as symmetrical and like a mirror image as possible, I'm going to put these on either side of the, of the carbons. Because remember, carbons want to make as many bonds as possible. So I'm going to put my four hydrogens um, on these carbons like this. <clears throat> now, if you put the two chlorines like um, both up top above the hydrogens or sorry, carbons or both underneath the carbons, that would be fine too, because it's still kind of a, a symmetrical structure. So now I'm going to fill in all of our um, electrons. Um, now, keeping in mind my total number of valence electrons, I have four hydrogens, so that's four total for that one. I have two carbons, so that's four plus eight is 12. And then remember, chlorines, um, they have seven valence electrons total. So one, two, three, four, plus, uh, oh, sorry, plus eight plus eight. No, just plus eight because I have four and four. Um, so that's 12. And then plus seven is 19. And then plus another seven is 26. So I have 26 uh, electrons to play with. All right, 26 valence electrons. And then all I'm going to do is fill in my valence electrons. So carbon is happy already, both of these, because it has two, four, six, eight. All the hydrogens are also happy because they just want two electrons. And so all I'm going to do is fill in for my chlorine six because they already have two from that bond with carbon. And so everyone's happy now. And now I just want to make sure that it adds up to those 26 valence electrons. So I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. And so we are happy. We have uh, made our 26 valence electrons. Everyone is stable and everyone is happy. So there are several examples for Lewis dot diagrams. I hope showing both of the kind of ways to do it was a little bit helpful. Um, you guys have an assignment on Canvas to practice more of these Lewis dot diagrams. So make sure if you have questions that you ask. Um, and that's about it. All right. So if you have any questions, please ask either in class or by email. And good luck on your assignment.